Then you'll sports center we go for our next team prediction of this offseason, and this could be over the Mississippi State Bulldogs. The team that went 9-4 and four overall in the 2022 season. It was a good season for the Bulldogs. Battle this team being 2023 and where this team stands as we look forward to 2023 as we'll be talking about here today. We'll be analyzing this team and prick their schedule game by game in this video. Let's get started with a quick recap of 2022. Once again, the record was 9-4. and four, And this was a really strong team in the first half of the season. You consider the 5-1 and one start. Of course, they did lose to LSU there on the road. But... That was a road game and a brutal place to play, and LSU turned out to be an outstanding team last season. So a 15-point loss there really was not too bad, and otherwise this team was dominant in the first half of the season. Beat Memphis 49-23, beat Arizona on the road 39-17, beat Bowling Green, beat Texas A&M 42-24. Of course, Texas A&M was a huge disappointment last season, but... I mean, at that point in the season, Texan him still had some optimism. So to beat them 42 to 24 was definitely impressive. And of course, took care of Arkansas, no problem, 40 to 17. So I mean, it was a really strong first half of the season, five and one heading into the Kentucky game, which did lose that one by 10 and then got uh, beat up by Alabama 30 to six. Uh, so a couple of tough losses heading into the bye, came back, beat Auburn. Uh, 39 to 33 in overtime, lost to Georgia, the eventual national champion, 45 to 19, beat East Tennessee State, 56 to 7, and beat Ole Miss on the road. A nice win there, 24 to 22. So, I mean, a really strong regular season overall. A couple of uh, bumpy points down the stretch, but of course, beat Illinois in the uh, Relia Quest Bowl, 19 to 10. Which for this team to go out there after all that they had been through especially later on in the season to see that beat Illinois was definitely a great way to finish out the season for the Bulldogs and with that let's move forward to 2023 so your Ross preview heading into the season Will Rogers is still coming back he's got some experience now and uh, he is a very talented passer I mean you consider uh, his passing yards over the years nearly 4,000 yards of passing last season I mean, it's not the first time he's done that either, along with 35 touchdowns and eight picks, a 68% completion rate. So an impressive season for him, and uh, look forward to see what he can do in 2023 here. Of course, the backfield looks pretty good overall. Jaquavius Marks is coming back. who put up nearly 900 yards, nine touchdowns last season. You do lose Dylan Johnson. He is transferring out, uh, put up right around 800 yards last season. So you do lose him, but at least Marks is returning the receiving core is a bit of a concern considering you are losing three of your top four uh Ra -Ra thomas is gone rufus harvey's gone caleb ducking's gone you do have lydiatric griffin coming back who put up nearly 500 yards last season but otherwise it will be a bit inexperienced in the receiving core this season uh you lose two on the o-line three on the d-line one linebacker and then four in the secondary so defensively I'd say that's also a concern. Linebacking situation should be okay experience-wise, uh, but the D-line will need to rebuild a bit. Same with the defensive secondary. Uh, there are a lot of key players from last season that will not be back for 2023. So, I mean, offensively, quarterback situation's good. I'd say the backfield's good. Receiving core, a bit of a concern with the lack of experience there. Uh, you are bringing in a couple of receivers that could have an impact in 2023. Uh, and then defensively, of course, uh, several losses as well. And it's also the first year under the new head coach, Zach Arnett. So we'll see what he can do with this team. And I mean, I will say this, though, year one could be a tough one for this team, just considering a lack of experience on both sides of the ball, plus a uh, new head coach and everything. But I do think in the future, uh, this team should be right up there back in contention. I mean, this has been generally a pretty consistent, good team in the SEC recently. I mean, last season, uh, got up to nine wins, which was a great season. Uh, even seven wins, not bad in 2021. They've been uh, bowl eligible for what seems like forever now. They've been to a bowl game uh, every year since 2010. 2009 was the last time they missed one. So it's been a really good past decade or so for this team, considering that, but I mean, this is still a talented team with upside, and it's going to be interesting to see what this team can do. Uh, first, your head coach and everything moving forward. But your transfer portal and recruiting, Sawyer Robertson is off to Baylor. Mike Wright's coming in from Vanderbilt. So you do add uh, Wright there, who will likely be the primary backup behind Will Rogers. Dylan Johnson's off to Washington. Rara Thomas is off to Georgia. Rufus Harvey's in the transfer portal. And then you got uh, your Aquarius Spivey. Expect him to have an immediate impact coming in from TCU. Otherwise, the transfer portal has been 
Uh, mostly negative, I would say, for this team. You do bring in a couple of receivers as well, but all those guys are expected to be a uh, ways back there in the depth chart. And then, of course, Javon Banks, defensive lineman, is off to Kansas State. You bring in uh, Jacoby Albert, who is coming in from Kentucky as well. Recruiting-wise, you're 27th in the country, which isn't bad, but that does put you 11th in the SEC. You got four four-stars coming in and then 22 three-stars. So overall, uh, not too bad, even though it definitely would help uh, considering some of the inexperience to add a few players from the transfer portal, which... Spivey is far and away, I'd say, the most significant player uh, that this team has coming in from the transfer portal. You do lose a few uh, significant players to the transfer portal, and you're not bringing in too many. So that is a bit of a concern. I do have this team at a 7 out of 10 on the future forecast meter. I think the future is bright for this team. It's just, I think, 2023. There's a lot of uncertainty for this team right now, and uh, so I'm being a bit cautious for this team, but I do think... Uh, there's a lot of potential on both sides. There's just a lot of young talent and some inexperience as well, which uh, could lead to success definitely in the future. I just don't know that uh, we're going to see that in 2023. But with that, let's take a look at the schedule now as we look forward to 2023. And you got your first three games all at home, which is definitely nice. But all three of those games definitely are not easy. You, know, you got Southeastern Louisiana, which is uh, absolutely the easiest out of all those three. Arizona is a bit of a step up. And then you take on LSU, a team that I expect to be a true national contender in 2023. So yeah, that's going to be your first big test of the season there. And they got South Carolina on the road, Alabama home, Western Michigan at home. Uh, kind of an interesting spot to play Western Michigan in early October. And then you got your bye week. You got Arkansas on the road, Auburn on the road, and then Kentucky at home, Texas A&M on the road. And then Southern Miss and Ole Miss at home to finish out the regular season. Of course, Ole Miss, that game is going to be on Thanksgiving night, you would assume there. So looking at September, Southeastern Louisiana, easy win. Arizona, you beat them as well in a closer matchup. I do think Arizona hangs in there, makes it a game. But I do think he beat them in the end. So you're 2-0 to start the season. LSU, I think he hang in there against LSU. You make it a close game, maybe an upset bid. Uh, and, but in the end, I think LSU is just too good of a team. They're too complete of a team. And, I mean, it's going to be tough to beat them, that's for sure. So I'm going to take LSU there. South Carolina on the road. This is a 50-50 game here. It really could go either way. I mean, South Carolina could be a decent team next season. Uh, I'd say they could be right in there between six and eight wins. Uh, so not a bad team. I do think on the road, I do want to take South Carolina, but a close one there. So you're 2-2 two and two, heading into your second month in Alabama. Yeah, just too good of a team here. It is nice, though, I will say this, that you have LSU and Alabama both at home. I mean, there's a chance that you could beat one of those teams, and if you did, I mean, that would be a massive upset and a huge win for this program. And really, I mean, if you can beat either LSU or Alabama in your first five games, that sets you up for a pretty good season, I do think. That gives this team some really good momentum heading into the rest of this season, which would really be good. But I do have you dropping uh, both of those games in the end. And then you got Western Michigan, easy win there, so a nice win before the bye. You got Arkansas on the road, Auburn on the road, which both of these games are very winnable. Both teams have got uh, right around, I'd say, seven to nine wins. I think I've got Arkansas at eight and then Auburn at seven. Um, so, I mean, both teams will be decent. It's still winnable. I think you could win one of those for sure, but I do have you dropping both. So, it puts you at three and five heading into November. You got to win three of your last four to get to a bowl game, which... I do think you do. I think you have a really strong November here. You beat Kentucky. A nice win there. Texas A&M on the road. Texas A&M should be playing some pretty good ball. I do think by November they'll be improved. I do think in 2023, uh, I do have you dropping that one. And then Southern Miss and Ole Miss. You get two big wins to finish out the season here. Southern Miss, you take care of them, which honestly, they've been decent in recent times. So I think that'd be a nice win there. And I do think you take care of them. And then Ole Miss... Beat them last season. You do this season, too. I do think you finish out the season strong with a really good win over Ole Miss. In which I will say this. In my Ole Miss prediction, if any of you guys have watched that, I actually did take Ole Miss to win that game. Um, but I'm actually going to be switching that to Mississippi State. After thinking about it a little bit more, I do think the Bulldogs get some nice momentum after that uh, Southern Miss win. They're going to have the motivation of getting up to that six win threshold to get to a bowl game there and i mean plus mississippi state beat them last season so you got momentum from that 
and you got them at home this season. So I'm going to take Mississippi State to knock off the Rebels there and get up to six and six. And as for the range, I've got eight and four for the ceiling, four and eight for the floor. I do think this is a talented enough team to uh, maybe get up to seven or eight wins, maybe even further. I mean, last season, this team got up to nine wins. But I do think, though, considering some of the circumstances and uh, everything that's gone on, I mean, that could work in a positive way or a negative way. And I have it somewhere in the middle. I do think this is a talented team, though, a team with a lot of potential, even though some inexperienced. I think the future is bright for this team. I do think 2023 is a bit down, maybe, in comparison to some past years. But 6-6, six and six, if you can get up to six wins, get to a bowl game, win a bowl game, get up to 7-6, and six, I'd say that'd be a successful season for this team and really a sign of a bright future for Mississippi State as well. But with that, let me know your thoughts in the comments below on the Bulldogs. And I appreciate you guys all watching as always. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. Catch you on the next one.